Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Pokemon Go as of version 0.57.2. And I apologize for how my voice may sound. I am just getting over a cold that almost took my voice. So I may be sounding rough for a couple of recordings here. <laughs> also, took us long enough. Yes, yeah, so pretty much everyone else in the world has already recorded about Pokemon Go. So please don't leave. We got some tips that may be handy for you at the end. Maybe some of them you haven't heard before. And even if you have heard them, they do bear repeating. Mm hmm Especially the safety tips. Yeah. When I first heard about this game, I was like, hmm, interesting. Oh, and before we move on, we should probably describe what phones we're currently playing the game on. Yes, equipment is important. We are both currently playing on Google LG Nexus 5X. Lux got his phone first, so his is technically older. I got mine this past fall, so it was a much newer model when he got it, but I tend to be a late adopter. This is actually my first smartphone, and half the reason I got it was to play this game. Yes, and since we're talking about the phone in particular, quick tip for any other Nexus 5X owners. If you haven't heard about this yet, it will break on you. So make sure your warranty is up to date. It will get repaired by them. It's a flaw in the soldering on the motherboard. So if you have a protection plan from Google or Verizon, you're going to want to use it. Because in about 16 months from when it was purchased, it probably will break. It will get into something called a boot loop. When it starts restarting on you over and over again, call up Verizon or Google, whoever you have the warranty through, and they will repair it. It is repairable at this point, and at this point, they still have parts. Or if you're a geek, you can look up online how to get the soldering to work again. <laughs> Just thought I'd bring that up because it's important for this particular model of phone. Yes. And continuing on phone details, Lux and I are on different networks. Lux is on Verizon. I am actually directly through Google with Google Fi. Yep, which means she's actually using Sprint. T-Mobile. And US Cellular, I believe. Yes. Okay, now on to the actual game. When I first started playing it, I couldn't really play it. <laughs> Because I downloaded it while I was at where I was living before, which is out in the middle of nowhere, where from those who play the game, knows nothing spawns. So I had to wait a day before I could actually go in to where I worked so I could actually start collecting Pokemon. Then I came down to visit Ember and set up a special program on my phone that allowed her to actually use her account, I should say create an account with it, and actually play it herself. On Lux's phone, which got me kind of hooked on the game and then when I found out Google had cell phone service and it was cheaper than what I was paying for a feature phone which for reference was through Verizon it was like okay I can have a newer phone I can have a smartphone and I can pay less money and the money I do pay can go to Google who I like much more than Verizon just on principle yeah I'm gonna do that <laughs> So yeah, she got a taste of it through my phone, and I already had backup batteries for my device, so it made it pretty easy to be able to play for long periods of time because we were kept switching back and forth between the accounts on the phone. Especially if something unusual, well, what was unusual for the time, came up. We were like, okay, catch it. Okay, log out. Get back in and see if you can catch the same Pokemon. Yeah, because we were like, starters spawn? Oh my god! Yeah, that that was back when that was a really rare thing. Not well, like now where it's a bit more common. Well, it's still pretty rare. It's just they've been doing events that encourage it. Yeah, well, for a while there was a Charmander nest at a Pokestop near my office, so. Mm -hmm. Also, she is lucky enough to have Pokestops within walking distance of where she lived, where she lives. Yes, several. And there are also several that I can manage to hit on my lunch break from my work. And let's see what else important information. Um, we both chose Charmander as our starter. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't really matter much in this game. It's just the first Pokemon you end up getting. Yeah, the mechanics of this game are so different from any other Pokemon game. Yeah, it's almost like it's a complete opposite of how you work in the games. Because we are like still using Pokeballs and regular potions constantly. In the regular games, you would have like stopped buying those by now. 
Yeah, and you probably would have sold what you had left to have more money to buy more great and ultra balls as you got access to higher level items. Mm hmm And you would have been buying full heals and full restores and stuff like that. Because I know by the end game in the regular Pokemon games, all I have is full restores. Yeah, I never bothered with individual items as soon as I could get full restore. Well, you know, in the Pokemon games money usually wasn't an issue because you won the battles and you also came across items that could be sold for high value. Here all the items are dispensed from the Pokestops or you pay to buy them from the shop. Mm -hmm. And even then it's not full access to all the items, like you can only buy Pokeballs. Regular ones. No Great Balls, no Ultra Balls. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can buy potions either. No, you can't buy potions and you can't buy revives. You can buy lucky eggs and you can buy limited use incubators. Mm -hmm. Also um, storage and Pokemon storage upgrades. To go over a couple of changes that have happened recently because of the new update that released 80 plus new Pokemon into the system, I think they actually increased the amount of items you can hold by default now. I'm not entirely sure about that. I did buy both a bag and a Pokemon uh, storage upgrade prior to this release. So I'm not 100%, but I think Lux may be correct on that. I just can't say 100%. Because I only bought the Pokemon storage upgrade, so I'm up to 300 on that. And I'm at 350 on the items, which I'm pretty sure was also 250. Because I'm pretty sure the storage, uh, the item storage and the Pokemon storage were the same number. Yes, initially they do match in less than until you buy upgrades. And after this update, they weren't going to match because I'm like, okay, if I minus if I minus 50 from my from my Pokemon storage, yeah, they don't match anymore. So going back more to game mechanics, overall, this game seems to have the worst morals out of them. Yeah, and we're not just talking about the theory that when you send a Pokemon to the professor, it gets turned into candy. We're just talking about the fact that, yeah, I don't like this Pokemon, toss it away. Yet you still go out and capture them. In the normal games, you capture one of everything unless you're trying to get a specific gender or temperament if it's a pokemon that you don't want to train you just capture one for your pokedex and be done with it in this one we're still catching ratatas we're doing it just for the stardust and mm -hmm. for the xp we're catching multiple pokemon that we have no intention of using and trading them away to the professor to get candy that if it's a pokemon we're not interested in raising we're not even using the candy we're just trading them away to keep space in our pokemon storage and even for pokemon that you really like and want to train up like your starter you're still going and catching multiples just for candy and stardust so that you can power up the pokemon you do want to keep mm -hmm. and that just feels so not right when you're trading away starters that was one of the hardest things I did in the game. I, I waited to trade in any starters until there was a promotional period for double candy so that I could maximize trading those in. And I did still keep multiple starters for the opportunity to raise more than one or if someday we get trading. Yeah, it's another thing that's not in here from default. Trading and battling your friends. You can't do that currently. They haven't even implemented it now. They also haven't done breeding, which was along with uh, Gen 2. So I was like, okay, when are we going to get this, people? The only thing we can battle right now are gyms. Yes, which, you know, gym battling is part of the Pokemon game system, but there's only eight of them and you progress along. Now you can go after a gym anytime you can hit a location. And it doesn't matter who controls the gym. Because you get XP either way, and you level up your in-game badges either way. Because there's a badge both for training at a same type gym, and a badge for winning battles against an opposing gym. But there's no mechanism to battle friends, and there's no mechanism for battling game NPCs. There's no battling in the game outside of a gym. You don't battle the wild Pokemon, you just throw berries and Pokeballs at them. You don't even have rocks like you do in the Safari Zone. Yeah, though that does remind me of Matt Pat's game theory on this. Of where it fits in the timeline. It's very interesting, and the fact that Ditto came out does not... Invalidate his theory. It does not, it just means, in our opinion, that the timeline is continuing to move forward. 
which is an interesting dynamic for this type of game because as updates come out, it's not a static game. Yeah, it's not a static time period. The time period moves forward in the game as they add new stuff to it. And I really just enjoy the physical aspect to it. The fact that I have to get out and walk around and stuff like that it gives me plenty of reasons to be fit and outdoors. Not like I didn't like the outdoors in the first place. It's just I've gotten pretty sedentary as I've become more and more of a geek. And I would normally, as long as the weather was okay, go on walks on my lunches or just go on walks, period. But it would be so boring because before I started playing Pokemon Go, I didn't have a smartphone. I don't have an MP3 player. So I couldn't listen to music on my walks. So walks were just kind of boring. This makes it more interesting to walk around and gives you additional incentives. And it's especially fun when you're doing it with friends. Very much so because of the different items. Even if you both hit the same Pokestop, you get different items. You both go after the same Pokemon and it's a different level for each of you. Or even if it's the same level, you still actually both get to catch it. Yes, because it's one per application, not just one period, which would really suck. Any other features should we go over? Or do you want to move on to what you're enjoying most about it? Or I could go on to that too, you know. <laughs> well, let's see. We talked our wish list. We talked the morals of the game. Oh, we didn't say what team we were on. Yeah, don't hurt us. We're on the most popular team. Team Mystic, and we didn't pick it because it was the most popular, and I didn't pick it because Lux was already on it. I just picked it because it, it felt the most closest to me, because I'm like, I'm not really a person who relies on instinct. I'm not really a person like Team Valor. I'm more Mystic. Because I was actually tied between going with Mystic and... It's Valor, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I was actually tied between going with Mystic and Valor. Well, I pretty much wasn't going to go with Team Instinct uh, from the beginning. Not a huge fan of the color yellow, and I didn't really like the presentation that they gave in-game for the team. And given a choice between red and blue, just pure color-wise, I was going to pick blue. My choice came down to the Pokemon that was representing them. I liked Articuno the most. Yeah, out of the three original Sacred Birds, Articuno but Lugia is my actual favorite. Ah, uh, Lugia. And then that reminds me of the first movie and the wonderful translation of a particular scene in the, not first movie, uh, second movie. Yeah, Pokemon the movie 2000 in the U.S. There's this wonderful scene where Ash goes, I wish my mom would have named me Bob. <laughs> I would really like to know what that was in the original Japanese because the Japanese language is so wonderfully filled with puns. Mm-hmm. And is it even the same kind of thing? Did the poem have anything to do with the Japanese name of Ash? Or was it entirely different and that was entirely localization on the U.S. side? Mm-hmm. But now back to the game, and since we brought them up, speaking of this particular Pokemon, where are our legendaries? And how are you going to incorporate legendaries in this game? Because they are usually severely OP. And you usually have to either choose to use your Master Ball, which you get in the game, to capture them, or hope and pray you can weaken it enough to toss a, the correct Pokeball at it. And in early gen games, legendaries are actually rare and legendary, unlike more modern games where everything's legendary and everyone can catch them. So if the legendaries are incredibly difficult to get, which a legendary Pokemon seems like it should be, then the rare people who get them are just going to dominate the gems. And if they're common, not as common as a Rattata, but let's say as common as a Dratini, then everyone is just going to stock the gems with them. So in this game format, how do you fit them in? I mean, Chanseys have been hard enough in the gems because their HP is insane. Yeah, and also Snorlaxes. Snorlaxes and Chanseys and then... Since this update came out, the Blissies. Mm -hmm. Snorlax you can actually power through because while they're tanks, they don't have as high of an HP. Even a low level Chansey has like 300 HP. So even if you're really strong, odds are the game is going to time out before you can manage to defeat the Chansey. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, I'm thinking it based on the first trailer that was ever released for the game. Legendaries are probably going to be some type of event thing, and they're only going to spawn in a certain location. And they're going to be hard to take down by yourself, so you have to have other people around to help take it down. And the real question, who gets it? Does everyone get it when they take it down? Is it going to be like a team thing, where if your team holds the legendary for long enough, each of the people who participated in taking it down from that team gets a copy? So it's going to be so much like a gem, except you have to hold it for a certain period of time. Because gems, you don't have to hold for a certain period of time as long as you can get your money out of it. Yeah, as soon as you get into a gem, you can collect your coins. You have an advantage if you hold the gem for the full time cycle because you can collect on additional days within a same gem. Ooh, I just got an idea. Especially since Niantic, the people who created this game, also made another game before this called Ingress. And in Ingress, you actually had to take over points and create a network from your own team. And you create these grids by connecting points th throughout the game. So what if you have to control a certain number of gems in the area to activate a point for your team to get a chance to go out and catch a legendary? Oh, like gem competition around here is not fierce enough already. But yeah, that is an idea. Especially with the fact that suddenly Team Instinct came out of the woodwork. <laughs> Because for a while, all you saw around here controlling gyms was red and blue, fighting back and forth between each other. Yeah, and now it's becoming more and more common to see Team Instinct. So it's like, okay, were these people who were just in the background and waiting and leveling up and not going out until they were ready? Or are these people who were later adopters of the game and they chose Team Instinct because it was the least popular and that way they could be different? So anything else you want to go over? Well, I think that's kind of all the main stuff. There's so much out already on Pokemon Go that it's like, well, how much can we truly say that's unique? Mm -hmm. Well, it's mostly our ideas and what we've enjoyed about it. The unique thing about it is how we've experienced it. Good point. Good point. And that program that Lex mentioned before about being able to uh, have two profiles on a single phone, uh may no longer be working with Pokemon Go. When uh, Lux's phone broke a few months ago, I tried to do the same thing on my phone and was not able to get it to operate. Yeah, and that's why I brought up the thing at the beginning that Nexus 5Xs will fail after a certain point, because mine did, like three days after the warranty. Yeah, so if you were considering dropping your device protection plan and you happen to have the same phones we do, don't do it. Yeah. And if you are out of luck with that, it's going to cost you anywhere from $75 to, a, what was it, 175 179 179 So it's either $75 for a, we're going to fix it, or 179 to verify that it's fixed, and if it can't fix it, send you a new one. Which is still cheaper than a new phone in most instances, unless you're far enough along with your carrier that you can get an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Also, me talking about this problem is not me not recommending the 5X. It's still an excellent phone. Just keep an eye on it around the 16-month mark. Though we should mention at this point, it is currently only available through the Google Store. And Lux did not mention his and mine were both purchased directly from the Google Store. Even though his service is through Verizon, his phone was not purchased or subsidized through them. Yep, all I did was slap my SIM card in this phone and bada boom, it worked. Also, if you haven't paid attention before, I have a grandfather and a limited plan, and they're going to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Yes, and um, just to let you know, since I'm on Google, I pay for one gig of data a month. I get credited back for what I don't use and charge for anything that goes over. Right now, I average under half a gig a month. I know you guys are shocked. <laughs> Well, she also has Wi-Fi in her house, and she also camps out at Starbucks, so. Yes, anytime I can get my phone on Wi-Fi, I try to do so. Most of my actual data usage is from walking around playing Pokemon Go. And I uh, may as well mention that the amount I save on my data every month is enough to pay for the protection on my phone. So, shall I go on to our final thoughts and our tips and tricks? Yeah, well, obviously we're enjoying the game considering that we're still playing it all these months later and we're still actively playing it 
and enjoying it before the additional 80 Pokemon were released. Though I was getting a little tired of catching Rattata, hoping they were going to be my fourth ditto. I've caught three so far. Two of them were Zubats, which I caught on different days, but I actually caught in the exact same physical location. And speaking of dittos, I finally caught one today myself. That was disguised as a Centret of all things. I love Centret in those versions of the game. I don't know what it is about the little guy, because he's, from my understanding, he's like not the best Pokemon, especially since you catch him early in the game, but I liked him. Yeah, I remember enjoying um, Furret in Silver. At least it's cuter than Raticate. And that's another thing we haven't mentioned with the new update, they've added stone evolutions. Not that we didn't already have Pokemon that would traditionally evolve via stone, but stones are now within the game. Well, we should say that they have now added item evolutions, which includes stones. They also include stuff like Metal Coat, which helps you evolve an Onyx into a Steelix. I can't remember what other ones require Metal Coat. Yeah, I mainly remember Onyx and Metal Coat. But I didn't always have someone to trade with, and that was a trade evolution mm -hmm. in the traditional games. Another nice thing is that you can do trade evolutions as regular evolutions. Like, you don't have to trade to get your Alakazam. Mm -hmm. Or have to use stones for the Eevee evolutions. No, just name changes or take a chance on the randomizer. Mm -hmm. Names. Do names. Yep, and they're easy to find online. Just type in Eevee Evolutions Pokemon Go. It should be like the first couple of things on the page. Yes, including getting Umbreon and Espeon, which was one of the things we were most excited about with this release, is that we could finally get our Psychic and Dark Eevee types. Which are like our favorite Eevee types. Mm -hmm. When they first announced those guys, I'm like, oh my god! I'm not talking about for Pokemon Go, I'm talking about for the original games. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Yeah, especially since Espeon ties back into mythology. You know, really, really old cats that tend to have some mystical abilities, having two tails. Yep. Though it's funny because Eevee always looked more dog-like to me, and Espeon is definitely feline-like. Mm -hmm. Where Umbreon is more dog-like again. Mm -hmm. Should I move on to our tips and tricks? Yep, let's go for that. Alright, we're going to try to stay on topic here and clearly outline our preferred tips and tricks for Pokemon Go. So first, safety aspects. Always go out with a friend. If you possibly can. Even if you're both playing the game, two of you are more likely to notice something happening around you in the real world than one. Also, being in a group makes you less of a target. It also gives you a chance to keep an eye out for other Pokemon because your friends will probably have them spawn on their screen at different times than yours. And they can watch for something new spawning while you're in the middle of a capture or gem battle. All right, early on we mentioned battery packs in brief. Now we'll go into that in more detail. Have a backup battery pack for your phone. And go ahead and be plugged into it while you're at full charge. It will decrease how quickly you lose charge on your phone. This allows for longer gameplay and for the ability to make emergency calls. Now to go into specifics on batteries, we both have Anchor battery packs. Yes, I also have some older battery packs from Monoprice as emergency backups. Mine is a 1600 milliamp with a maximum output of 5 volts and 2.1 amps. Mine is a 1300 milliamp with uh, two USB charging ports. Uh, all of our batteries except for Lux's Monoprice are from Anchor, who is also whom we got our spare charging cables from because we had to go from C to USB. Anchor does also offer a battery pack that is USB-C by default. My battery pack has the advantage of being very compact. They do also have a thousand uh, milliamp one that is about the size of a credit card. And still on safety, turn off the music. You do not need it. It may be enjoyable and nice to listen to, but all you need is the sound effects to play the game. Just like any Nintendo game, the sound effects are there to give you cues for when something's happening. You don't have to look at your screen all the time. If you have the music off, you can clearly hear the sound effects of a Pokemon spawning. Also, when you get into 
physical range to be able to access a Pokestop or to strengthen or challenge a gym. This allows you to be more aware of your surroundings and makes you more likely to catch spawns before they disappear. Uh, briefly going back to uh, friends, as we briefly touched on gyms there, you can tag team gyms. If you happen to be on the same team, great, you can team up to strengthen or take down opposing gyms. But if you happen to be on opposing teams, you could still take out a gym for whatever the third team is, and then you can take turns being in it. Like we said earlier, you don't have to hold a gym long to collect coins. Take the gym out together, one person takes it over, collects their coins, and then your friend takes you out and gets their coins. Another safety tip, don't go out too early or too late. Pokemon spawn based on location, not time of day, currently. At least at this point. There are different Pokemon coming out at different times of day, but it's not tied to the day-night cycle as it is in later Pokemon games. Mm -hmm. And hmm, this still kind of ties into safety. Starbucks camping. While you're not moving around, so you're not getting any steps to further your eggs or get candy for your buddy Pokemon, a Starbucks is a populated location, which is either going to be a Pokestop or a gym. This allows you to repeatedly hit a Pokestop or consistently strengthen or weaken a gym and be in a well-lit place where there are other people. So if you really want to go out in the evening, you can go to Starbucks. If you don't want to go inside the Starbucks, it is usually possible to reach the Wi-Fi and the Pokestop or gym while being outside the building. I know prices vary by locations and regions. In our area, the cheapest thing to buy at Starbucks is a 35 cent cheese stick. If you're a gold card member, the cheapest thing to do is to get a tall cup of coffee, $1.95, free same day refill. So, Starbucks camping, you get to sit on a location and utilize it, free Wi-Fi, save on your data. Okay, this is a tip you've probably heard already if you're actually playing the game or played the game for a period of time. Save all your Pokemon you catch. It's a good idea to keep every Pokemon you catch as long as you have space for it, especially even the lower ones. Keep catching those Pidgeys and Rattata because they will give you experience points and candies that you may not be able to use. But hey, you can save these candies for when you use your lucky egg. Because what you want to do is evolve everything you can. Because it's a quick way to get the catch Pokemon bonus. Because you get a Pokemon every time you evolve a Pokemon. So keep your lucky eggs until you have a lot of evolutions you want to do to either get new Pokemon or just to do evolutions. Because you can sit in one spot and just basically catch a lot of Pokemon. Also, you want to catch every Pokemon you can because of Stardust, because you need the Stardust for the Pokemon that you do want to keep in level. Also, you never know what a Ditto is going to be. And also to clarify, this is a quick way to get lots of experience points for your character. That's what this is all about, getting a lot of experience points very quickly. Yes. In case you haven't read it in the game description, the Lucky Egg gives you double XP for 30 minutes. So sitting there and evolving Pokemon is much faster than catching Pokemon, even if you're at a Pokestop that has a lure module or you're using incense. Okay, here's another tip you've probably heard before. Save your limited use incubators for the higher count eggs. Use your infinite for the 5 and 2k. This will have your egg hatching badge go up more slowly, but your incubators will last longer. Because if you do nothing but 2 and 5Ks in your limited use, those break after 3 uses. You've gotten 3 eggs, yes, but you could have done those same 3 eggs in your infinite, still have an incubator where the 10K egg in a, one, in a limited use, I keep saying one use because of the promotion where we got some one use ones, you get much more utilization out of it. Also, speaking of the promotions, watch for different promotion periods. Hold rarer Pokemon like starters and wait to trade in excess ones until there's a double candy bonus. 
since Pokemon like starters are so difficult to get and you can only have one buddy Pokemon, this is a good way to get extra candy quickly. Here's another tip you may have heard of, but I don't know. I kind of found out about it by myself and some figuring on my own. You want to have two teams of six. One that's mostly focused on attacking for when you attack a gym, and one that's mostly focused on defense so you can quickly place a Pokemon into that gym after you've defeated it with your attacking team. So you want to focus your attack team on high attack, high HP Pokemon, and you want to focus your defense team on high HP, high defense Pokemon. Now we know that the game has now put in some protections against an unclaimed gym being sniped, but there are no protections from a fellow team member taking an open slot in a gym that you've been working to strengthen. So getting your Pokemon in quickly to a strengthened gym is key for getting your coins. Okay, and something that went along with the recent update for the Johto Pokemon is that the Pokemon storage upgrade has now been discounted to 100 Poke Coins. That is much quicker to get. It's 10 coins per gym, so if you can get into 10 gyms, you will have enough coins to get the upgrade. The upgrade is really worthwhile right now, especially with the additional 80 Pokemon. Don't know if they're going to keep the price down permanently, but if this is a limited time thing, sooner the better. For those who are running an Android device, we have a tip on how to get in-game money without spending real money. Google has an app called Google Opinion Rewards. You can add this app to your phone and answer surveys. Answering those surveys will get you rewarded with Google Play credit, which can be converted into Pokemon Go currency along with purchasing mp3s or anything else that you would get through the Google Play Store, excluding subscriptions, unfortunately. So you can build up survey credit if you do not have the funds to sink real money into a cell phone game, or if you would prefer not to sink real money into a cell phone game. Uh, I'm kind of in both categories. Uh, just to let you know, Depending on how many surveys you get, Google Play credit can build up very quickly through Google Opinion Rewards. I have used some for the game and I still have like $14. Do make sure to read through all the details. Um, Google does tell you how the information is going to be utilized. There is a block at the beginning of each survey telling you that. They do use items like location history. So depending on how you feel about Google and what level you want your privacy protected, this may not be for you. This has been our thoughts on Pokemon Go version 0.57.2. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe, check out other videos, and share with your friends. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt. Tumblr, and Twitter. If you'd like to support this channel financially, please check out Coffee and Patreon. You can also check Lux's commission page for commission availability.